Yo, what's up? How are you? Good. How you doing, man? Not bad. Good. It's great to see you. It's been quite some time. It has. When was it? 2019? I think so. And plus, I was too busy getting my face beat in by crosswinds and just smashed that. Uh, <laughs> that was a memorable week, dude. Yeah. Try to stop them. It's race in the world. Man, that was a game. I actually was referencing that race to somebody else. Very Actually, we went down to Ecuador and uh, it was a 1.1 race, but there was really no pro. There was one pro team there. So it was really more like a cat one race. But yeah, we were talking about riding as a team and our team was a little disjointed in Southland. We didn't know each other, whatever excuses, excuses. And I remember I rode up. I can't remember if we were about to hit a crosswind section, but I rolled up and I was like, there are three teams up there. And it was the team, the Skoda team, white, green, and yeah. orange. And this dude's like, hey, mate, what the hell are you doing up here? And I was like, <laughs> I'm just moving up. What are you doing here? He's like, composition riding. And it was really the first time, like, it's not, it's, po- there's not enough pro races in the US to understand that as well. But like, yeah. he was politely saying, get the hell out of here with it. If you're not here with your team, like, get out of here. And that's just not, you know, you don't see that until you get to that level. And uh, we were doing that to a lot of people there. We're like, dude, wh- who are you? Get out of here. Like, come up with your team or yeah. get out of here. And that was a re- that was my best gem that I took from that of, like, how to deploy teamwork up at the front. And then, uh, yeah, and then I think, like, 10 minutes later, I was off the back. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of politics that go into it, like what teams sit where on the road and and things like that. It's, um, yeah, it's quite quite interesting and if you're kind of like a, a no one really knows you or your team then you're kind of screwed um, 100%. yeah you got to gain that respect from everyone else and then they'll they'll let you do what you want really but and that's one thing that i was telling some of these guys we had a, that we were probably i mean we won the first two stages which was nobody saw that coming and they they were flatter thank god before we went to altitude in ecuador and uh so we were sitting like third squad and i had said to this one other guy i was like hey man you got to realize that if you know there's usually uh medellin comes over from colombia like action was supposed to come in november i heard if there were like four or five more pro teams there is a much different pecking order yeah. to our composite team and so it's easy to take that for granted when the big boys aren't there but what's uh, you got nationals coming up right in a month yeah nationals in a month yeah yeah mm-hmm. that's my first race of the season so um i'll aim for the the time trial for that which i feel good good yeah um this is the first year that i've kind of had like an off season like a proper three weeks off the bike doing nothing. Oh, wow. Um, and it, it was better than I expected. Like, yeah. In didn't, what way? Didn't take, well, I didn't take, I would have thought I'd like get real fat, lose all my fitness, which I did lose fitness, but it didn't take too long to get back to feeling all right on the bike. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and no, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. So how does that fly with it being like your first race? Is that just really, is that awkward that it's like, Oh, Hey, we're going to nationals. Is that a New Zealand thing? Or I'm trying to think I'm the seasons are different, but like you guys are going. We're peak summer at the moment. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, never mind. I'm totally okay. No. Well, yeah, then we don't really have races in New Zealand. So there's Tura South and which is, like the main one yeah. and then there'll be there's Tarn New Zealand gravel. cycle yeah I think that might be cancelled now I don't think that's um I don't think they're running that this year um and then last this week just been was New Zealand cycle classic okay so that's New Zealand's only one uh UCI tour and then there'll be nationals in a month but normally nationals is like the second or third of January. Okay. So it's real early. Yeah, real early. <laughs> so you basically just you guys just go off the European calendar basically then. Yeah, our our, our team does now. Yeah. Okay. Like so. Yeah. 
Well, speak, see, uh, man, we just started chopping it up. I'm like horrible at starting this podcast. Half the time people are like, oh, are we recording right now? I'm like, oh, well, we'll start now. But the first 10 minutes <laughs> is actually really good. So uh, for people that don't know us, welcome to the Evoke Bike Podcast. We are super stoked to have Ethan Bat here. If you are like, wow, it seems like these guys know each other just in passing in New Zealand, mostly through Tyler Lockie, who yeah. was the uh, intermediary, we'll call him. But tell the people, uh, who are you? Who's Ethan Bat? Where are you from? Because they'll hear the accent and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm Ethan Bat. I am 23, I believe. You are. I 23. just looked it up. And I was like, damn, he's yep. that young. He was 21 when we met. I knew you were young, but I didn't realize that young. Yeah, yeah. Time flies. <laughs> um, and I'm a professional cyclist from New Zealand. And, racing and I ride with... for... Uh, Bolton Equities Black Spoke Pro Cycling. And who is that first sponsor? Because when I first looked on Pro Cycling Sets, I was like, whoa, new team. How did I not see that? And I was like, oh, wait, new sponsor. Never mind. No, nah, it's, the sa- it's the same guy sponsoring. It's just um, just a change of change of names. Okay. So it's, it's his, his company that we've changed the name to. Got it. Whereas Black, Black Spoke is just, just a made up, made up name. Cool. Yeah. What's the so you're gonna go do nationals and then what are you guys looking forward to? I was kind of scouring through the calendar. Do you know your individual rider calendar yet, or are you still waiting to find that out? Um, not yet. It's still pretty early. I think they're kind of like finalizing that at the moment. Cool. Um, but there'll be a few kind of like fun, fun ride race right, kind of races in New Zealand. Okay. Um, and then. We'll head overseas in May, early May, and then it'll be a full-on European season until Sick. October or something. Yeah. So will you guys be there all summer? Yep. Yeah. Badass. Are you super pumped for this? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be good to to go back. I've never done a back-to-back European season, which I think will going last year will help a lot this year. Because mm-hmm. like racing and racing in Europe is like a whole different, whole different sport than in your ass, really. Go in on that. What do you think you're going to pull from last time to this time? Besides just experience, like get a little more granular on that when and talk about just the difference in Europe because that's what everybody says, and it's always interesting to hear what you guys pick up on over there. Yeah, I think for me personally, it's more just the positioning. Mm-hmm. And because that's really a lot of like Europe is how well you can position because there's 170 guys every race that are all as strong as you, if not stronger. And it's really racing to certain points in the course, like this corner, this crosswind, this hill, this narrow point. And if you're not in the right place there, then you'll be dropped mm-hmm. or waste a whole lot of energy and be dropped later somewhere else. So, so what's the, so, and then people will hear that like, okay, well, how do I, how would a rider know when do you like lighting the match? It's like, okay, well, we're going to race this corner and then maybe the climb's not going to be as full gas because everybody raced this corner. Or it's like, how do you even meter that? Or is it just like, I know that if I don't get to that corner in the top 20, I'm screwed anyway. So like, let's go and if i blow up on the climb like it is what it is or like you know what i mean it's just it's such a it is a different sport and it's it's kind of we have like the team obviously do a whole lot of research and Mm -hmm. we'll tell you the points that you have to move up for like dangerous uh, areas and we have race radios with most races Mm -hmm. um so they can tell us in the cars when to move up and things like that but it's kind of, I guess, like you gotta you gotta use your energy, spend your energy to save it in other places. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you have to. You might burn a few matches trying to move up to be in the right place at the right time, but if you don't do that, then you won't even have any matches to burn a few didn't do that if that makes any sense yeah i know it does that's good the um what was it let's let's 
jump into some training stuff first and then we'll kind of circle back to racing um and maybe talk about nutrition if we have time if that works for you yeah cool so this is always my first question actually for training because i think it's super open open-ended and i'm always just curious what people have to say in terms of what do you think is the most important aspect of your training um Good question. I think for me at the moment would be just more intensity. Mm. And because previously I've done a whole lot of bass, like a lot of bass, mm -hmm. and I hadn't really done a whole heap of speed or high intensity stuff. So I think for me at the moment, I need to work on that to, to improve because I've got the base i can mm -hmm. I, i've got the foundation i just haven't really got the the higher do top you end think stuff. That that's so. related to like just the time of year like because i know you are a big volume dude do you think if you i mean you ride a lot um i did that, ride a lot so did you I've ride changed. last now you changed i'm a changed man no way yeah so what's the what caused you to want to ride a little bit less um i just was thinking that maybe there was more um benefit from focusing specifically more on doing the training properly mm. um and i did i did change coaches halfway through the season last year and okay. it's just different um coaching philosophies i guess yeah did he did your new coach think you were kind of like noodling around or i'm really curious about this if you can tell tell me some more about it uh, new, i'm like wait Ethan's coaches. riding less am i supposed to be riding less we're supposed to be like mega volume people <laughs> no no i don't i'm not really i just do what i'm told really okay i'm i'm pretty coach pretty cool. chill i'm not right. like i'm yeah i'm very um just get it done yeah um i didn't i previously didn't really like all the numbers and stuff it would get me too um just too confusing for me um but now with my new coach um all the stuff that he does kind of makes sense cool um and there's always a reason for your training and you know why are you doing it mm. whereas before i'd do five hours every day and not really too many intervals and looking back on it i don't really know how i used to do five hours every day uh, it's just crazy <laughs> it's a lot i'm man i i love the five hour ride my coach is like less five hour rides and i'm like what and he's like yeah more four three three four hour rides like every weekend you want to do a five and six hour ride but then you're doing these like two hour rides let's scrap that and yeah. do three four hour rides just more often and i'm like but what about the five hour ride that i want to go burn five thousand kjs he's like oh by the way you don't care about kjs anymore i'm like what and he's like yeah and i want you to ride easier i was like dude yeah ah. but yeah, yeah it's working so i'm like damn. I, I do like a good five hour ride because you can go out and explore and mm -hmm. um i think um i moved cities last year and doing five hour rides like i basically explored this whole new city in in the summer mm. and if i wasn't doing that then i probably wouldn't know all these cool places but um but now i'm actually quite enjoying not spending all day on the bike Mm hmm that's good that's good there's positives and negatives to each way of doing it so yeah 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 find the positives so aside then from changing up how the time spent any small things you think that, that you do that has a big impact on your training kind of another wide open one there um nah not really a lot of sleep i prefer training alone okay how come um, just because i like going wherever i want and not having to to really think about it beforehand mm -hmm. 
like if they want to go up this climb I'll go up the climb if I don't then I'll go somewhere else and you're not really having someone saying like oh no nah, like we should do this we should do that like, I just focus on my training and get it done I think also when you're with other people it's like well what if I want to ride at like 280 or what if I want to ride at 250 it's two different yeah. speed you know it's like oh no, I gotta ride this person and then and yeah I'm kind of I don't know if I have a bad reputation for that, but you know, it is what it is. So you got to enjoy, you got to enjoy the journey on the bike. Um, yeah. So what is your, and maybe this has changed now. So, and I was, this is kind of, this is really funny. You're totally throwing me for a loop here, um, but this is good. Cause I don't know the answers to some of these questions based off just watching you on Strava. So what is your training consist mostly of then in terms of volume and intensity? It sounds like you're going more towards structured intervals. Maybe what kinds are those or. At the moment, I'm because I'm focusing on the time trial for nationals. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of um, FTP work and like sweet spot mm -hmm. and recovery. And then shortly, I'll go into some VO2 stuff. Um, cool. Yeah. Do you do what's your favorite type of stuff for FTP? Are you like uh, over under guy, more steady state, mix of it? Uh, it's mainly steady and it's really just you have your targeted power and then you have you have the duration that you want to do it for so I think currently it's between 55 minutes to 65 minutes and then I will just choose how long I want to do the effort for so I could do four 15 minute efforts or three 20 minute efforts mm -hmm. but as long as I do at least an hour's worth and I think the minimum amount of time per like interval is 15 minutes mm -hmm. so as long as it's 15 minutes or more then I can just choose how long I want to do it for which is I really like doing that that is um, nice so if you're feeling it, you just go longer. If you're having a bit of a rough day, you just do shorter ones, but more of them. You, how often are you just like, I'm just going in one crack? Um, I've done it a few times just because I find it a whole lot easier once you're started just to carry on. Mm hmm it's like when you get up in the morning, like people that hit the snooze button, are like you just woke up. Why are you going to redo the worst part? Like I'm going to go back yeah, to sleep and then exactly. I have to do it all over again. It's like, eh. yeah, it's, a, it's like, so, maybe when you're yeah. having a bad day, you just keep going once because it's like, man, this, when you're not feeling good and you stop and it's like, damn, I still have to do three more of these things. This is going to yeah. be a horrible yeah. day. So I, yeah, I try and do as many minutes as i can mm -hmm. so around 20 to 30 minutes cool. i think is pretty sustainable yeah that's cool awesome what's um have you ever felt like you trained too much or that you were and i guess maybe riding too much or not doing enough intensity and it's maybe very recently or maybe as you were kind of coming up into getting into riding um i think uh last year i i was um beginning of like between january and like mid mid season because i think my biggest month was 100 hours in march i think it was and it's just yeah it's such a long time on the bike you not really recovering and you're kind of wondering if you really need to do this much training when you look at your teammates and they're not doing that much and I was just like real grumpy and not a very nice person to be around most of the time so <laughs> I was like <laughs> maybe I should see what else is out there and if I can kind of switch it up and yeah. I now that I'm riding a lot less, it's yeah, it's a lot more enjoyable. So what's the last, what would be a month of hours? Um, 
I'm not really sure at the moment because I've had like a whole lot of breaks and stuff, but um, probably like four, four to 600k weeks. Okay. Which is, I don't know what that is in miles. I was just like, man, you need to have me doing math in my head. I'm going to sound like a dumbass if I say something like, oh, that's, a, that's like 360 miles. So like 15 About hour weeks probably? Miles. Yeah, 15 to yeah. around 15 hours at the moment. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what's What was kind of the tra- trajectory or what's the journey of you from when did you get into riding up until now? What's, I know you've been with these guys. This is your third year with Blocksburg. Is that right? Yes, my third year. Um, I started racing like track racing on oh, no little way. BMX bikes <laughs> when I was seven, I think. Okay. So I was like track racing on BMX bikes and then did that for a few years. And then I think when I was 13, I started racing on the road, just like local club races. Um, and then I'd go around to school racing do they have that in america well i was gonna actually ask you this so like what is it like in new zealand what's the where does cycling fall and i was actually thinking about this when i was riding today i was like all right i know he's in new zealand do i dare ask him do they play australian rules football there or is it what's the what's the number (laughs) one sport uh rugby okay and then where does cycling fall in popular oh so, uh, no okay cycling so yeah you're probably pretty low on the so like the states the scale like i think to be honest i think cycling is probably bigger in the states okay did not expect to hear that so then how did you get into this track racing uh, as a seven-year-old who was that's the... a good question my i think my dad kind of got into cycling and was um doing like some club races and then he heard about this like this junior racing and then he took me along and i loved it and then kind of went from there because i remember going to all his races when he was when he was racing and i was a little kid just watching (laughs) that's so cool i wish i had some I, i think endurance sports like at least in the states were very team sport focused baseball yeah, yeah. You know, soccer, basketball. But if we just were given more of a chance of like, hey, go run for 30 minutes. And yeah, you get tired, but like get that endorphin high and like see what that's like a little bit. It's just so different. And I wish that, you know, Europeans have so much more of this like Nordic and cycling and it just, you know, so much more prominent there. I wish that that expo that got some more shine here. So um, so then you so you do that and then so school racing, no, we don't. I, the first time I knew somebody raced, there was a kid I played volleyball with. I didn't even, this is in high school, didn't know he, he was a cat one. He was racing, I guess. We crossed paths uh, probably when I was 23, so I'm out of college. Yeah, I think, no, 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 no. So wait, maybe this was 26 when I started riding a bike. I'd have to do the math again and think, think back. I'm like aging myself yeah. that I can't remember <laughs> what that is. So, and this guy's like, oh yeah, Chris, he rides, he, he races. And I was like, I didn't, I like, I knew the Tour de France, obviously. But yeah. like, I didn't know people were racing at like the next town. And there's this like Tuesday night, like nobody talks about it. And they're like, dude, Chris raced when you guys were in high school together. Had no clue. And this guy, we started riding and I remember I eventually got a road bike and he drops me off at my house. I'm like, oh, you want to chill later? He's like, well, I got to go finish my ride. I'm like, where are you going? Like he lived a neighborhood over. He's like, oh, I got like three more hours to go. And I'm like, you're going to ride for three more hours? <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude. I was like, we just rode for two hours. Like, what are you doing? He's like, dude, five hour ride. Got to do it. Want to be fast. And I was like, all right, see you later. Like weird. Yeah. But so no, school racing. Mm, well there's mount high school mountain biking i'd say that's yeah unless i'm still think, out of the know but to my knowledge no i th- yeah i think you guys have a very big university scene yeah whereas we don't we have the the school scene which is as i guess the school scene's pretty much the same as the university scene it's just at a younger age okay so like they get you into it and they're like okay it's going away like 
Why yeah. don't they keep? <laughs> well, you race. You can start racing from when you're like thirteen, I okay. think, until you're you leave high school, which is um like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. So were you riding um, through all those years then in university too? No. Uh. Well, I guess that was just the last couple Alexis, of years. Yeah. I'm like, wait, this guy's. Yeah, terrible. I'm still yeah. pretty pretty young. So which is I good. did school racing, which was pretty cool that had races all around the country but i was homeschooled so i was okay. just me versus teams from the same school and they'd like gang up on me and it'd be it'd be good fun because like we all got along but you know as as me versus them and oh, i made you better yeah yeah no doubt yeah. Do you cross train or lift at all when uh, you're in the non-race season? And what about then when racing? Um, no, I haven't really. Do a bit of Pilates and um, things like that, but not really cross train. Because in New Zealand, you don't really have too much of a off season. Because mm-hmm. you finish racing in Europe in October, then you have Tour South in November, and then you'd have a couple of weeks off, and then first of January you're kind of racing again. So there's not a whole lot of time downtime, and it's yeah, yeah it's summertime when it's our off season, so you just go to the beach or do something good like that. So are, you know, now that you're, you've been on a pro team, are the guys that are only focusing on European racing, are they taking more of a break and saying, you know, I forget the local stuff. Like I need to really get some downtime. Cause that's so hard. Don't you uh, think yeah. it's really hard to go full on all year? Like at some point, aren't people like, Hey, I love Southland, but I can't, can't show up ready yeah. to rip. Like I'm on a break. Yeah, everyone, everyone season slight, built slightly differently. Mm-hmm. So I haven't raced since Southland in November. And so I've had a bit more time off. Mm. Um, so everyone's program is slightly differently structured. But yeah, I think um, they're not going into these races at the start of the season in New Zealand like with peak fitness. Mm-hmm. they're just racing them because we're a, we're a pro team and and we kind of have to show up to them mm-hmm. um but they're also doing doing well at the races they're not they're not turning up just straight off off the couch but yeah you know they're not they're not peaks at peak fitness that's fair that's fair um so talk switching to racing a little bit what results are you most proud of or even maybe not even result race that gives just like the best memory um that you've had so far to south and there's definitely um some some great memories there um my the first year uh michael bank won his first yellow which was 2018 i also managed to i was on his team Mm -hmm. writing for him um but i also managed to win the pink jersey which is the under 23 and the king in the mountain jersey while basically just being on the front the whole week writing for him so that was pretty special um and then that year pretty sure it's the year you came to southland Mm -hmm. um and we bridged across that six minute gap with four of us from the same team. Do you remember that on the Dude. gore stage, the fifth stage? Uh, no, I was probably fifth stage. I was like dead somewhere. Uh, that, that was, um, that was definitely a good memory because we let the, the break up the road and they got out to, I believe it was six minutes and there were like gc threats in the in the move and then as soon as it turned right into the crosswind there were five of us from the same team and we just rode across to the to the front group yeah i think i remember i remember being on a bad 
position when that happened, if I'm thinking of the right stage. The, the, the crosswinds there were, were nothing I had experienced before. It was, yeah, I mean, it's like the videos that you see. It was, you can only stay in the gutter so long until it's a mass explosion and not in the right spot. And again, when you're not with, when you're not riding as a team, yeah. nobody's helping you out. And it was yeah. just not a good, not, not a good showing, but. Yeah. So that's a good memory. And also another one would be um, 2019. I won a stage of some stage race in Czech Republic, which was pretty special. Like wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Um, how that unfold? There was a break up the road that had been up the road the whole day and we had 3k remaining which is what a mile and a half yeah. um, and then they were still up the road and I was like they're probably going to stay away so I have to bridge across to them and I was thinking that I was going to do it and then the guy right in front of me decided he'd do it so I just followed him and he blew up and I just kept going across, made it across. And then the breakaway, there are two guys on the break that were left and they were still riding real hard. And then I just sat on and then some guy sprinted really early and I just got on him and just rolled him on the line. <laughs> and I was really confused because I wasn't really sure if, like there were people in front of that break. So yeah. I celebrated, but I, I wasn't really sure if I'd won. And then like the guy that I'd beaten was like checking my Garmin and things because I was just from some amateur Dutch team and he was on the German national team or something. And he thought that I must have like hit in a tree what because it's just laps he i'm pretty sure he thought that i hadn't done the right amount of case so he he was like checking how many k's i'd done are you things. kidding me <laughs> dude that oh my god funny. so he seriously rolled over like let me look at your garment and we could yeah. just confuse like what are you talking about yeah That's, <laughs> yeah because i think i was the only one left in my chain at that point there might have been two other guys and so he must have thought that i was one of the guys that we'd lapped but that no i too I'd funny, just been, man. yeah speaking of races where there's not a lot of people left what happens at that uh tar and gravel race or what's it called because there's it's like shell there were i think like less than 20 people finished last time i looked is it just a brutal course or is it what's oh uh, yeah it's savage like it's not very long. I think it's a hundred and it must be like 80 miles. Yeah. And then it's 30, 30 K of it's gravel, I think. Okay. And it's very windy. It's like South and wind. Okay. And it just gets blown to pieces. And before, before the race, you're like, Oh, this isn't very far. Like it should be, like pretty easy it should be a longer race and you finish or you're halfway through the race and you're just like this is horrible like damn yeah no nah, it's is, savage that race how is that wind affecting like a lot of times athletes will say you know hey i have a really hard time putting out consistent power when it's windy out do you, do you guys get better at that because when, you, when it's like blowing and gusting like it can be kind of annoying I think, is it just become normal or is it not always as, or I guess maybe it depends where you live in New Zealand, but I remember riding with one of the guys there and we we're like, oh, it's raining. He's like, dude, this is all the time. Like this weather is just what we live in. Like we're just used to it. It, it didn't phase him at all. And yeah, I think, do you think that helps you in just, I mean, there's no harsh conditions to you guys probably. Yeah. New Zealand the weather's changing every day um but there's definitely a lot of places that are windier than others okay like the town i used to live in it's windy all the time like you go out and you'd be having to put out 
350 watts just to move. Yeah. And then you turn around and you'd be flying. You'd be going 50 miles an hour and doing 100 watts flat. That and it's crazy. dead flat as well. So it definitely makes you stronger, but it is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Sounds good. Definitely is still annoying. What's uh, looking towards 2022? And you don't know all the races you're going to, but what's your biggest goal race? Maybe not even this year. What's your biggest goal race forever? Yeah, a big Tour de France, I reckon. Yeah. One of those big grand tours. Any, which grand tour lights your fire the most from watching it? They're all different, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I think Tour de France is the main one that kind of like, as you're, when you're a little kid, that's the one you dream of. Mm -hmm. But then I think like, the Giro's real beautiful with all the stages and stuff and then Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. They're all amazing. They're all I mean, different. It's just, yeah. It's, uh, I really want to see the Giro at some point. Um, I saw a time trial at the Vuelta and yeah, man, I just, what's the longest stage race you've done? I mean, Southland for me was one of, was the longest actually, I think. Um, what's the longest one that you've done? Because when I, I mean, obviously I'm an amateur cyclist. So getting to do a week long is pretty awesome, but I ride, I ride a pretty decent amount. And yeah. I look at these guys and they're doing, I, I don't think people realize how long this race is and how hard it is. Yeah. Um, the longest, um, stage race I've done is seven days, but it was 1300 kilometers. Mm. Solid. So I don't know what that is in miles, maybe 700. Yeah. Even more. Cause a thousand would be like 600, three, yeah, like seven, eight, closer to 800. I'd say. Mm. And that was that, savage. That sounds savage. Where was that? Uh, in the Breton region in France. Okay. Um, there might have been somebody in Ecuador that was talking about that and said it was just insane. Uh, a guy from Montreal that was on this composite team I was on. Uh, my buddy from back in the day raced in that area of France before and said the races were just crazy. So I can only imagine mm. a stage race of that <laughs> whole other beast. No, it's, it's definitely a very nice part of France, but it's just up and down. There's no yeah. flat and yeah. it's no straight roads either. I think it's 300 TSS days every day. Back to your positioning, positioning point. Yeah what's um what are you doing the let's say you had a huge race so it's not just a random you know race that you're kind of like training through what are you doing for a race routine the week before a big race race routine i'll just be trying to chill out as much as possible mainly still mentally. riding a bunch or less riding yeah or? Not nah, well, I think for me personally, I go better once I'm warmed up, so I need some good K's in the legs, mm -hmm. so I will be less riding, but still probably have a day where it's like a four or five hour ride mm -hmm. a couple of days before, depends mm -hmm. on the event and how it starts, like Tura Southland this year started with. Oh, it starts with the, the prologue mm -hmm. and then a short criterium thing. So it's quite short. So I, I do a longer ride, probably three days beforehand, just to, I don't know, maybe it's just a mental thing for me, but I just feel better if I have some volume in the legs. I don't really find myself performing as well if I kind of like, don't ride much mm -hmm. like if i only did a 10 hour week then i'd probably be struggling mm -hmm. for a few days yeah i agree i think take 
there's a really interesting paper road to gold it's like based off nordic skiers and they were talking about how there's all these like theoretical tapers but they never really looked at like the boss dogs and so they took people that were either you had to be a world champion or a national champion to be in this study i think it's 13 of them and they followed like what did they do for tapering and and almost none of them they some trained more but there was none of this like okay hold two weeks cut volume only just do a little bit of intensity it's a really interesting uh kind of overview that they did on these uh skiers and different sports sure but still endurance based and um yeah the old may would have probably just continued with a 500 mile week but you know (laughs) i'm changed now change man change man bit smarter there you go what's let's talk about nutrition a bit what's your favorite food on the bike um i am currently going through a phase where i'll have uh i'll pre-make uh like a wrap or a burrito and then you'll put cheese and did you have marmite when you're in new zealand i think I, had, I, don't, I don't think i liked it though it's very but it's very better i don't know how you explain it yeah i had those cookies um those were good what do they call it what cookies they're um ah god i won't think of it there was some there is some new zealand cookie that one of the our our ds was from australia and ben also liked them and they're like oh these cookies are amazing they were good but it didn't i don't know anyway anyway i'll 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 put mama and cheese on this burrito or wrap whatever you want to call them and then like fold it up and put it in a toasty maker and then kind of like cook it and then wrap it up in tin foil and have those did it get messy no 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 it's 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 um it's clean as it's just um it's kind of like a savory yeah thing a lot of carbs good what's so are you doing that like an endurance ride or if you're going out to smash you're gonna eat that nah if i smash i'll just have um i'll have carb mix in my bottles and probably just um a few muesli bars and maybe a gel or two but okay are you targeting any like number of carbs an hour when you're going super hard or like doing like a tt ftp session um supposed to be around i can't remember what it is 60 or 90 or something depends on your so you're not body weight. no not not me okay i'm very i'm very um what do you call it chill about the whole thing okay more carbs dude more carbs no i know i know Eat i do more carbs you're I actually worrying eat. me right now because so many people don't fuel enough and the, it's 90 and it could be even more if you you know once your gut gets trained but uh, i got a message from my coach yesterday saying i need to eat more so awesome it's um yeah plus one go coach what's the favorite food to eat after well, you don't do as many five-hour rides. Big ride. What's your favorite thing? If you're coming back, do you have any favorite food to eat right after? Um, probably just um, a lot of rice, mm. yes. a bit of tuna, maybe chicken, mm-hmm. um, veggies, just good stuff like that. Cool. Pretty, pretty like a lot of whole, carbs. wholesome eater, it sounds like. Like natural, yes. natural foods, yeah. Yeah, yeah what's anything equipment wise what kind of everybody always asks me to ask this question what size tires are you running and tubeless or team tubes or tubular just tubes at the moment on training wheels okay um what's your favorite believe... tire Victoria. okay um i believe currently i'm running 26s but i prefer 28s yeah are they out of the 28s or you have to ride them because of your team? Do they make a 28? They make it. Uh, they do. They do. Um, it's just whatever I get sent, really. Whatever's okay. in stock. Um, but 28s on New Zealand roads because they're very rough. 
chip roads. It's pretty bad. Um, I find a 28 a whole lot more comfortable. So yeah. I've a funny story. It's not actually that funny, but I've always been like 25s. I put 28s on. And I was like, this is ridiculous. This is like a Cadillac. I can't get into this. And so I went up to do a 160 mile ride in Vermont. And it's, um, they're not there. It's gravel roads. It's like non-season. They're not paved roads. My friend yeah. was like, listen, man, you need bigger tires. Cause if it gets graded, like you're going to be really pissed and your rims are definitely going to get jacked up. I've got these thirties. So I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> they measure 32. Dude, they were so awesome. I came back and finished the road season on them. And I moved to the mountains in North Carolina and like descending, it is, you're just like, let's go. It is yeah. incredible. So I'm actually a convert uh, to these WTB 30s on my bike, they're 32, or on my wheels, they're 32s. But yeah, wider, I, I think I'm convinced. Ted King, I was talking to him and I told him I rode 25s. He's like, dude, you're back in time. Why, why are you riding 25s? Like, I just like how they feel. Yeah, 20, 25s are the old 20s. Yeah. Dude, I, I looked at this, so I have a uh, storage called here. I'm like, oh, tire, I should use this up. It's a 25. I just put it on two days ago. It looks so skinny. And today I went over to this, it's like summer here. It's like 80 degrees and I was running out of water. So I like rode over this. It wasn't, it wasn't a curb, but I don't know. I'm used to these big 32s. I like, it wasn't super smooth. My back wheel hit it and instantly flatted. And I was like, damn it, this tire sucks. So I might just pitch it, but yeah. um, anything unique that see, are you guys still riding Pinarellos? Yeah. Yeah. Lo so I'm, I say, I don't ask too many sponsored questions. Cause like, you're going to tell me that you love it, but the bike looks amazing. Anything that stands out that's unique about your guys setup um, or maybe anything that's, that's changed since you first started riding with them. Tires. Nah, all the, all the gears stayed the same. Nothing. I'm still on my bike from when I first started 20, okay. 20. Um, but I believe this year we're getting the Pinarello F. Just the um, new one. Okay. Looks so the same, I think. I'm not sure. Is that going to replace the Dogma or is it going to be a different type of... I think it's just the, the new model. Okay. Just cool. like, yeah. Yeah what uh wrapping up here what for people that or athletes that are maybe you know what's the category system there i was going to say cat one and it might not be the same thing down there how do you guys progress through the ranks or what are the ranks there we have under 19 under 23 and then elite so what is it? So you were just called elite before you got a pro license? Yep. Okay. You're, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called elite. Um, so you can just race any race, really. Okay. In New Zealand. So, just... so for elites out there that are trying to get to the pro level and, you know, what do you think got you there? Maybe it's as simple as results. Maybe it's... You know, what do you think that they need to focus on? Um, or maybe said differently, you know, what kind of advice did somebody tell you that you found helpful? Or just what advice would you pass on to the younger rider? Um, I think just keep working hard. Um, because that's, I think, how I kind of kept developing, like, as the junior rider i would be getting thrashed against like the other junior guys and mm -hmm. i just kept going kept working hard and i'd get better results but then also as i got older those guys that were winning kind of either left the sport or um weren't winning as much because you caught up and then um you kind of even again so as long as you just keep keep at it um and also just contact as long as you have make contacts and talk to people and it's kind of like cycling 
is kind of who you know as well. Mm. Like results definitely help, but who you know is also a very big one. And it's so different now of like, for people that don't know, I'm turning 40 soon. And so back when I was 26, it was getting to that point of like, I just got into cycling. We have the cat one through five system. I'm sure you're familiar with got my cat one started doing some races, tried to do what NR NRC was the national race calendar here. And a guy was like, listen, you got to travel around, beat all the races. And I think the biggest thing that someone didn't tell me was like, make sure you talk and make connections there. Cause there was no Instagram. I don't even, no, there was Facebook, but it wasn't like it was today where like you could easily reach out to every coach and like have a social profile and have social media and I think, you know, results, like you said, they totally matter. But in today's day and age, you have no excuse not to be making a connection at every race and following up with people and talking to sponsors and like bring something to the table to a team. It's like, yeah. I don't know, there's interesting articles of athletes that complain about, you know, I just want to be an athlete and I don't want to like run my career as a business. And I'm like, this is like, you're in the real world. This is, you're going to be your job and you don't want to like go out there and meet and make those connections. It's just part of the yeah. game. It's also like take all the opportunity you get. Mm -hmm. Like the way I met Tyler was some, there's this Facebook group in New Zealand where you keep this G, G rated. If Tyler's involved in the conversation. <laughs> no, it's very G rated. Um, there's this Facebook group where you sell like, old bike equipment that you don't want yeah. and there's a guy on there that posted that there's this team in california looking for um two more riders and then i was like oh yeah like, i'd be keen to go to america so i messaged the guy and he put me in contact with tyler and then like before i knew it, i was i landed in la and i was getting picked up by tyler and no way was that your first uh, time to the States? Yeah, yeah. I was 18, <laughs> I think. <laughs> what a chaperone. I Yeah, I didn't know what I was, like, the team sounded legit, and it was. So I, it was a real good team. Um, but I got picked up by Tyler. There are two others from New Zealand that went. So we all got picked up by Tyler. And we're like, is this guy a cyclist? Like, yeah. What have we done? <laughs> We've screwed up. This is like, we've been scammed. <laughs> and, and then, because we're. <laughs> oh my God, dude. We're living, we're living with Tyler. Real nice guy. Um, and it was all good in the end. It worked out. But um, yeah, it was just like, just from a Facebook message there's an opportunity to race in America and I, I took it and, and then met Tyler and met all these other good contacts and that's awesome. still to this day, America is probably the, the most enjoyable time I've had on a bike. Really? What about it? Did you love so much? What races do you guys do over here? Um, mainly all the Californian races. Okay. And then I came back in 2018 and I did like Tulsa Tough and a couple of the USA crits. Cool. Um, but yeah, I just like the culture. Everyone's very, um, they're very nice and encouraging. And it's just, it's fun. It's yeah. a very, it's a very good time. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad to hear that was the experience. Um, it's and, and and for those that don't know Tyler's name, if you you might actually you should look him up on Instagram. When you first meet Tyler, you will have that wait. This guy rides. And yeah. if you've been to any USA crits races, he's the one with huge hair and probably giving the medal sign. My background's there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really funny when we had to say something to her Southland and he was the one to go up and talk and he was like, and keep it metal. And for he's like, Southland is very metal. And for, I'm like, 
these people don't know who this guy is and they're probably like, what is he talking about and a lady at our table goes what's metal <laughs> like <laughs> I can't, even, can't explain it to you man uh, thank you for doing that. this man this is uh i'm excited to see how your year goes hopefully you guys have an amazing well nationals first and then amazing trip over to europe and it'll be really awesome to follow the team What's the best way for people to keep in touch uh, with kind of what you guys are up to? I'm sure they have Instagram page and you've got a page and any yeah, other. Yeah, probably just Instagram would be the, it's really the main one these days. Yeah. Um, so my team is Black Spoke Pro Cycling. Sweet. And my page is Ethan Bat. Awesome, man. Thank you for doing Thanks. this, Ethan. It's been great. Thanks to for connect. having me. Yeah. Look forward to seeing some uh, big wins this year from you. <laughs> we'll try all right i'll talk you to you too. later yeah yeah right. see you man ciao